Welcome to Church Online. Special welcome if you're with us for the first time or if you're watching us as a congregation together or from an aged care facility. It's great to have you with us. My name is Lynn. I'm the minister at Adelaide West and it's a privilege to be sharing with you today. This last week has seen a return to school here in South Australia, a bit of an unusual one with some going to school in person and others online. It's not been easy for teachers and support staff and for all the students and for parents and grandparents juggling school from home and dropping off others to school. In these uncertain times, may you know God's peace and strength in the weeks ahead. Two weeks ago, Tonga experienced a terrible tsunami causing havoc across the Tongan Islands. And if you would like to donate to help Tonga rebuild their communities and their livelihoods, you can go to unitingworld.org.au. And we're also accepting donations at the church. How are your sunflowers going? We're starting to receive photos for the Adelaide West Sunflower Challenge. We have large ones and tiny ones and we've heard of sunflowers being grown in Broken Hill regional areas and locally, including out the front of the Adelaide West Church. They've been grown in pots and in the ground. They've been given as gifts to people and a few seeds have spread and shared to be so many flowers producing many seeds. If you have photos of your sunflowers, please send them to us at office at awc.org.au. As we do each week, we light a candle. It's a reminder that Christ is the light of the world. And abundant in love for each of us, present with us as we meet together. After the message today, we'll be, have the privilege of sharing communion together, so you might like to have some juice and bread or crackers on hand. Together we sing our sacrifice of praise to Christ our God.
The reading today is Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding round him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It seems many people have a fishing story. We all know the embellishment that is expected with those stories. You know, the one that got away was so big. I haven't had much experience of fishing. If any, really, I love fresh fish, but I'm happy for others to catch them. Although I like the idea of leisurely waiting for a fish to bite, being in the great outdoors, enjoying the sounds of the sea or the river, hearing the birds, waiting, watching, waiting. But, but that's not the kind of fishing we hear about in this story. These are professional fishermen. Anybody could have a bad night fishing, but we don't expect professional fishermen to come home empty, especially if they've fished all night. They fished at night as it was easier to catch fish before sunrise. During the day, fish stayed deeper to avoid the heat of the sun and it was easier for them to see the nets and to avoid them. Simon, later named Peter, was part of a commercial fishing operation, like a fishing cooperative with other partners, also professional fishermen. And they had caught nothing, nothing from a whole night of fishing. They would have been beyond frustrated. Jesus standing by the lake. And people are crowding around him as he shares the word of God. He's attracted a lot of people. Probably not surprising as he's early in his ministry and he's already healed many people. So he gets into Simon's boat and he asks to go out a little into the lake and then he teaches the crowd from the boat. And after he finished, he tells Simon, the professional fisherman, to go to the deep water and to let down the nets for a catch. Imagine Simon's response. He knows the lake and the best times to fish. He's been fishing all night and caught nothing. So why would he try again? But because you say so, says Simon, he seems to listen to some authority he sees in Jesus. He obeys even though there's a crowd watching and what could this do to his reputation? He puts his nets out and caught an extraordinary amount of fish. This is the biggest fishing story. So much that the nets began to break. And so he called his fishing partners over to help, but it was too much for them as well, and their boats almost sank. When Simon realized what was happening, he fell to his knees. Get away from me, Jesus, he cried. I'm not good enough to be with you. I think we can relate. Simon has seen a miracle, a miracle he can't understand, even though fishing is his profession and he's seen abundance. You know, when I come to a passage, it's easy to go straight away to see what others have said. 
what scholars have come up with, go to the commentaries. Now, I love commentaries. I have about seven meters of commentaries, but the, the scriptures speak to all of us. Yes, there's background reading, research, delving deep into the world of the text, behind the text and in front of the text, the world of the author and its cultural context, and in the text, the characters, the story, the style, and from all that, what the scriptures say to us today. But the reality is that God speaks through the scriptures to all of us. Every one of us can read a passage and hear the voice of the Spirit. With this passage, I printed it out. I circled and underlined various parts, two boats, fishermen washing their nets, finished speaking, deep water, let down their nets all night. I wrote down thoughts and questions around the words and some parts I put into my own words. And I wrote some words that came to mind and if they jumped out, I wrote them in capitals. And those words that were in capitals were abundance, astonished, don't be afraid and follow Jesus. They caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. This is abundance. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, including James and John, Simon's partners. And Jesus says to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. And they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. It's an incredible story. So simple in some ways, so complex in others. Abundance. I wonder what you think of when you think of abundance. Abundance is a very large quantity. Something that is abundant is plentiful, richly supplied, or no end of. You know, this last week or last weeks, we've seen abundant rain in the north of our state and in areas of New South Wales. We've seen flooding in January. I know of people with uh, family stuck in Cooper Pedy with roads cut off, train tracks wrecked. We've even seen waterfalls from Uluru in January. You know, interesting, when you Google abundance and go to images, sunflowers come up. True story. The famous Dutch artist Van Gogh, or Van Gogh if you're part Dutch, had a thing for painting sunflowers and at the Van Gogh Alive exhibition, you could go through a sunflower room and it seemingly was unending. Sunflowers as far as the eye can see, cleverly done with mirrors. We have sunflowers in abundance. Abundance. There's clearly abundance in the story. More boats are needed to bring in the abundant catch. Simon and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish. I would have been astonished too. One assumes the crowd was still around. Imagine their astonishment, the nets full, the boats sinking. Jesus tells Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And it translates from the original language to you will be catching people alive. There is a sense here of restoring to life someone under threat of death. Simon Peter wouldn't simply be fishing for people, but be God's agent in restoring people to life. In this story, Jesus doesn't even tell them to follow him. It is so compelling, the response is immediate and intentional. They recognize the moment and act and they pull up their boats up on shore, left everything and follow Jesus. Left everything, even the load of fish they've just caught, which would have been worth a fortune. They don't say, let us just sell this fish first. That will fund all of us for many months as we follow you. You know, commercial fishermen weren't elite, but they were better off economically than most Galileans. Leaving behind the fishing business would have been an economic sacrifice. They leave everything and follow him. There was a new life ahead, a calling to restore people to life. Where are we in this? You know, these words resonate for us, abundance, astonished, don't be afraid and follow Jesus. We see a 
God's abundance in our lives, God's abundant love, grace, peace, hope, and joy. God is abundant, abundant in forgiving, abundant in love. And this abundance comes to us in our everyday lives, business as usual, just as Jesus came to Simon, James, and John during their business as usual. Their business was rather empty at the time. He gave abundantly. Jesus comes to us at unexpected times, in unexpected places, including in these uncertain times. This call to follow doesn't come up in a mountaintop experience, but amongst the mundane, the everyday business as usual. You know, Wayne Dyer says that abundance is not something we acquire, but it's something that we tune into. Tune into the abundance of God. They were astonished. Are we astonished at the work of Jesus, the abundance of God? Are we astonished or are we so busy, so distracted by the shiny things around us, by so caught up in our own stuff that we don't see God's abundance? Take time to ponder God's abundance. Be astonished. As we recognize God at work, we protest like Simon, our worth in receiving God's abundance. And yet God gives to each of us in abundance, in God's way of love, joy, hope and peace. Jesus says, don't be afraid. Beautiful words. I need to hear these words every day in my life. These words are so reassuring. I had the privilege of praying with someone at the end of their life on Thursday. And as I read Psalm 23 to this beautiful lady, I was struck how the words of this psalm are such a comfort. We hear, don't be afraid, echoing through them. And follow Jesus. Don't be distracted by the fish, but as a response to God's abundant love, God's abundant peace, joy, grace and hope. Follow Jesus to become fishers of people, God's agents in restoring people to life as a people on mission, called into mission. Are we willing to leave everything and follow Jesus? Jesus will use us. So we trust, obey and follow without being concerned about what others think. We don't always know what that looks like, but God goes before us and we have the privilege of participating in the mission of God in the world, gathering people into abundant life, restoring life. Don't hesitate. Respond to Jesus immediately. It is the greatest thing that we can ever do. Just as a sunflower has abundant seeds to grow more sunflowers in abundance, So we, in our following, sow seeds in restoring life, bringing hope, abundance, astonished. Don't be afraid and follow Jesus. This is fishing with Jesus, living with Jesus. Amen.
Communion is a visible sign of God's love and grace. And together with our in-person services, we are drawn here by God's abundant love. We are virtually connected. A gathered community connected by time and participating together for us now and with Christians across the world. We remember how it all began. On the night when Jesus was betrayed by a friend, he sat at supper with his disciples. And while they were eating, he took a piece of ordinary bread, said a blessing, broke it and shared it with the ball. And then he did the same with a cup. He blessed it and he passed it around and they all drank from it. Today, we remember a body broken and a life poured out as we remember God's abundant love. And following the example of Jesus, we give thanks before we take part. Let's pray. In this time and place, O God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you prepare a table offering not just bread or juice, but your very presence, your amazing grace, your abundant love and peace and hope and joy that we may be filled, forgiven, encouraged and sent out again. Risen Christ, present with us now, thank you for all that you have done for giving abundantly, giving yourself for us. We are sorry for the times that we miss the mark. Forgive us for when we, are, when we get too caught up with ourselves or our own selfish desires, when we don't see your abundance and follow you. Thank you that these things, our sins, are forgiven. And may we rest in your love, knowing that we can have a fresh start, that today is the beginning of a new journey with you. Holy God, pour out your Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and juice, that they may remind us of the body and blood of Christ, so that united to him we may become all that you call us to be, attentive and present to the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours forever. Amen. I invite you to join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together. You can do that in your preferred version or in your preferred language. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I encourage you to take the bread and to tear it apart. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ and a reminder that we are a broken people put back together by God. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ, reminding us of the life of Jesus. And here in this moment, graced by the spirit of hope and peace, we discover the wonderful, abundant love that Jesus has for us. And we rejoice that these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. I invite you to take and eat the bread. Share it around with others in the room if you're with others and to remember Jesus' body broken and his compassion for each of us. And we take the cup. We remember the life that Jesus lived and the life that we are called to live. As a scattered community today, may we be a sign of hope and faith united in community together. 
Lord God, may this food strengthen us to love one another, be a reminder of your abundant love for each of us, and equip us for following Jesus. Amen. As part of our love for God and our love and compassion for others, let's come together to pray for others. Holy Creator God, as we've taken communion together, we are reminded of your abundance. Loving Father, we pray for our world, the places of war, injustice, poverty, flooding, fire and pain. In those places we pray for peace, justice, food, rescue, safety and restoration. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Tonga. We pray for them as they rebuild their communities, their livelihoods and their lives. And we ask that we'll be able to get the, the right aid that they need at this time. And we particularly pray for fresh food and safe drinking water for all. We pray for those who are stuck due to flooding here in Australia, for those that are repairing roads, and for commun communities that are isolated at this time. We continue to pray for areas in our world affected by COVID-19. We pray for our own country and others as we battle new waves of COVID. Be with those with COVID or isolating or feeling anxious in these uncertain times. Lord Jesus, we pray for our schools. We pray for the teachers and staff, for students, parents and grandparents. Amongst all the complexities and all the uncertainties, we pray for them. Holy Spirit, we pray for those that are on our hearts today and we lift the faces of people who are hurting or struggling, facing health issues, who aren't experiencing abundance in their lives. And we pray for them. We pray that your abundant love, hope, peace and joy would surround and carry them. And we pray for our gifts, financial and practical, that they would be used wisely to share the story of your abundant love and would make a difference to help alleviate poverty and suffering in our communities and in our world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who embodies amazing grace, who sets us free. Amen.
The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will be Thank you for joining us today. I hope there's something that has encouraged you and brought you hope today. If you would like prayer, you can either press the prayer button if you're watching live or send us an email. We would love to pray with you and for you. This week, remember God's abundance. Be astonished at God's abundance. Don't be afraid. Hear the words of Jesus and follow Jesus intentionally, immediately. And may the grace and kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love and presence of God and the fellowship, friendship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always as you go out to serve God's world. Amen. Blessings on your week. Sun for bear to shine.